You may have noticed that I don't talk much about the Starship, while many of my colleagues talk about it every time a new truck pulls up in Boca Chica. But why shouldn't they be excited? I mean, I am. We're talking about a revolutionary new concept in space travel, something that's not only going to take us to Mars, but to the moon and to even more distant places as well, to the outer reaches of the solar system. But what if this turns out to be not what we're hoping that it is? What if it's an engineering impossibility destined to rust forever in a remote area of South Texas? viewers in the Western Hemisphere. I do have viewers in the Western Hemisphere, don't I? If I don't, it doesn't bother me too much, but I find it very interesting how things have kind of shaken out with who my subscribers are, but grateful for every last one of you. But as you can see, you got a little bit of sunlight right here. So uh, yeah, it is indeed the morning. I've got my coffee here, and now that I've taken my mask off, I can actually enjoy it. So, in any event, I want to talk about the Starship. It's something I haven't talked about a lot. And before I do real quick, though, I want to emphasize, I need to know in GMT as to when you guys want to do the live streaming Q&A. I absolutely have to know that as soon as possible. Please put it in the comments. Those of you who want to participate in this, on this coming Saturday, so six days awake, post this right away, just so I know. I am looking at 6 p.m. GMT. 6 p.m. GMT is when I intend to do this. I know that may be inconvenient for some of you, and that's this coming Saturday. So please keep that in mind. So back to the Starship. The reason I haven't talked a great deal about it is because, frankly, it's a rocket that doesn't exist yet. And now I know that there's a lot of people, myself included actually, who think that, you know, NASA's focus on the SLS, the fully expendable, wasteful piece of junk, you know, the reason they're doing that instead of focusing on the Starship and, and going exclusively towards the Starship as a solution to all of our deep space problems may not be just because of the lobbyists at Boeing. It might also be because they're afraid that this thing isn't going to work. And they actually have some very good reasons to believe that. Let me explain. Okay, I think just about everybody has seen this video, but let's look at it kind of detail by detail. First, there goes the super heavy or big friggin' rocket, which I like to call it, and so do a lot of other people, with a total of 37 Raptor engines at last count and more than double the thrust of the Saturn V. Unbelievable. So, little wonder that it has the power to take 150 tons to low Earth orbit or 100 tons to Mars. And there goes the BFR back to land on Earth to be reused, of course, because the entire configuration is reusable. BFR returns pretty much to the exact spot where it landed to get another starship, a tanker starship, which is very necessary to the entire plan. So the starship with passengers on board, bound for Mars, waiting for another BFR to bring up another starship. And so the two carefully dock, 
and the tanker starship transfers its fuel to the starship with its passengers or cargo heading for Mars, either one. So according to Elon Musk, this is an easier process than docking with the International Space Station. And off goes the starship to Mars and adventure. But here's the problem. This refueling maneuver has to be performed six times, and every time the tanker has to go back through the atmosphere. And given how huge it is, the temperature of re-entry gets awful, as was experienced by the space shuttle every time it went back through the atmosphere. And if we're talking about the space shuttle, look at the difference in size. The starship is gargantuan by comparison. So here's the question that's going to be facing the SpaceX engineers, facing them at this moment. Are they going to be able to design something that's going to be able to re-enter the atmosphere six times, something this large, in rapid succession, because you're not going to have a whole lot of time to do any checking or repurposing because you've got a ship full of passengers up in orbit waiting for more fuel. Are you going to be able to do this process six times over and not have your ship burn up in the process? Now, this is a problem that was faced by the space shuttle engineers on a regular basis. Granted, the Starship is made of stainless steel, whereas the shuttle was made out of aluminum. But stainless steel is not going to save the Starship from burning up if its heat shield fails. And the shuttle had problems with its heat shield from day one. In 1981, during the maiden flight of the Columbia, after the staff at Mission Control finished congratulating each other, they noticed something that scared the hell out of them, to say nothing of the astronauts on board. Somehow, during launch, the Columbia had lost a few of the tiles that were vital to the cohesion of its heat shield, and there was absolutely nothing they could do about it. So NASA decided to roll the dice and brought the Columbia down anyway, and the world breathed a sigh of relief when the ship landed successfully. However, Unbelievably, NASA kept rolling the dice with the Columbia until finally tiles were again damaged during takeoff, and this time, during re-entry, Columbia was not so fortunate. It burned up on re-entry, and all seven astronauts were killed. Now, out of respect to the families of those seven astronauts, I didn't actually show any footage of that disaster, but rather just that diagram, which you're free to pause if you want to get some more details about everything that happened during that tragic day. But I think it bears pointing out that those seven people did not die instantly. They had at least 40 harrowing seconds before their ship finally broke apart and they were killed. And that really pisses me off because NASA should have done something about this years ago. In 1981, they had problems with the tiles and got lucky when they brought the ship back down and did not implement any kind of system to ensure that the tiles, if they were damaged, would be repaired before they try to re-entry. Instead, they just kept rolling the dice with their astronauts until finally their luck ran out and these people died. There is blood on NASA's hands, not just from this disaster, but also what happened with the Challenger. And we dare not take the same kind of risk with the Starship, which is one of its biggest flaws, because it's going to have to come back down multiple times, and we're not going to have enough time to check the tiles, which, by the way, was the new process that was implemented in 2003. After that disaster, astronauts 
made a painstaking examination of the entire space shuttle hull to see if there is any damage and replaced any damaged tiles. We're not going to have that luxury with the Starship. What do we do about that? Honestly, I don't have any easy answers. Well, there is an answer, but it's not necessarily easy. Simply attach a refueling module onto the ISS. After all, it's designed to be expandable. But the problem is, you still have to escape Earth's gravity well six times in order to refuel it. So, why not use the Lunar Gateway? After all, it has to escape a much, much easier gravity well. Just manufacture the fuel on the moon, which will be difficult, but still possible. Then fill up the starship in a single maneuver to the lunar gateway, and in the meantime, have the astronauts on the gateway check the heat tiles on the starship to make sure that it's going to have a safe journey to Mars. So when the starship enters the Martian atmosphere, it will be a lot less risky although it still will be a very risky maneuver because the starship has to hit the atmosphere like a skydiver in order to slow down and you're gonna love this hey we're getting kinda close to the ground guys shouldn't we do something about that I mean that whoa what the hell I'm not sure I'd want to do that the first time now, a fair number of you may already be familiar with that, but to those of you who aren't, it looks absolutely crazy as hell. I mean, there's no room for error here. The ship hits the atmosphere, as I said, like a skydiver, and given how thin the Martian atmosphere is, it may have to do this maneuver several times as it orbits the planet, a process called aerobraking that Arthur C. Clarke came up with decades ago before this utterly insane maneuver is performed in order to land. One thing goes wrong, and there is no way out. No abort, no ejection capsules, you either complete this maneuver successfully, or you're dead. I can see why NASA may be a little bit skeptical, but at the same time, they are probably just as skeptical about the Falcon 9 being able to land, or the Falcon Heavy, and yet SpaceX pulled that off. I certainly hope that Elon Musk is able to pull this one off as well, because if he doesn't, and we're talking about a hundred lives at stake instead of seven, a cataclysm on that level could end SpaceX. And in the process, end these incredibly ambitious goals we have of exploring the solar system. I certainly hope that's not what happens. In the meantime, don't forget the live streaming Q&A Post your feelings about this whole thing in the comments, by the way. I'd really like to know if you think whether or not the Starship is capable of doing what it's planned to do. In the meantime, stay angry about space.